Welcome back. Today's a fireside chat. About, I don't know, a month or two ago, I was doing a rod review on the Echo Traverse and as a pack rod, and I made the comment, if you want to know my opinion on $1,000 rods, just ask me. Well, it was kind of an offhanded comment, and I had no idea, but we got we got inundated <laughs> with do the thousand dollar rod thing and questions and blah, blah, blah. And so I'm going to, and I'm going to walk you through it because personally, uh, I think a thousand dollar rod is bullshit, but I know a lot of people, I've got lots of them and, and it doesn't mean I think they're bad rods. I just think that in today's market that it's kind of hard to justify unless, you know, it, you know, it, a rod is personal. It's what you like. And I'm going to kind of walk you through the origin of where I think that started and how it got there. And part of it is perception that there's just too many rich people out there that want to buy these rods and, and that people were buying them. But I, there's not, that's not how it got here. I think how it got here is it started with Orvis putting the 25 year warranty back, I don't know, 25, 30 years ago. And they showed a puppy eating the handle of the fly rod. And it said, you know, unconditional 25 year warranty. Well, that's the dumbest damn thing that ever happened. Why the hell should somebody warranty your rod because your dog ate it, right? And so then other companies followed suit. Everybody, and they went up, they went above that. They went unconditional lifetime. Well, that was never true either. That was. It was true for a little while, but it really wasn't because there was always a monetary cost to replacing a rod. And they all, before all these stupid warranties that were just, I mean, you think about it, it's a piece of graphite that is this tiny little thing, right? There's, they're, they're not, it's, it's tiny, even the butt section, sections of the walls are in the thousands of inches, right? And, and so they're gonna break and you break them. You know, they don't break just by casting, no matter what, it, it, the rod will break in the first two or three times you cast it, fish it, or it won't. Other than that, it starts being things that we did. It's, you know, hook dig in the back of the rod, you fell down, you hit the water with, you slap the rod tip on the water, the rod's gonna break. That was full on you, right? They're not made to do that. It is tiny graphite, but yet there's this warranty. And so, and then they break, you know, whatever reason they go back to the company, well, that starts cutting into the bottom line. That's their own fault, but they warranted it in the beginning and then they had to keep going. It's unbelievable how many rods get turned into these companies and now you got to pay for it. So it goes from $15, you know, I remember back way back when, you know, lifetime warranty still cost $7 for a Fenwick or whatever it was way back when, but now it's getting more and more and more because they're having to justify all this, this ridiculous warranty thing. But other things than that, one is it's made in the USA, right? That's the, the thousand dollar rod is made in the USA. And so that's, that is a good point to me. I like USA built stuff. And the next thing is, and really the big one is, no matter how big you think that our industry is, compared to general tackle, it is tiny. It is a tiny industry compared to, say, just bass, just bass alone, right? You know, some of those rods will sell 100, 200,000 units a season, and that's more than the entire fly fishing industry. And so we don't, you can't have a rod of, of high quality and say, well, I can buy a spinning rod for $150, dollars $300. Yeah, but they make 100 times as many of them. So there's more margin there for that, you know, more ways to spread that out. When you see it, and the other, the, the last thing about it is when you see the mom and pops, right? Like I've got a Berkheimer here, and this is a rod that Johnny and I helped design, the Berkheimer uh, streamer rod. Now you're going into custom builders. Well, you gotta imagine how hard it is to make a living going against Korea and the big companies that are corporately owned, right? And so, and you're gonna see a difference in those rods because they're hand rolled. These are gonna be more custom style rods. So when you look at a rod like a Berkheimer, you know, one of the high dollar rods, obviously some of the things you're going to see are the componentry. I mean, the componentry, higher dollar reel seats, you know, you can see it's custom handles and things like that. 
that's important. I mean, you're going to pay for that, obviously, and you're not going to necessarily see that in the, the lower priced rods, but it does give you one aspect that justifies paying more for a rod. And, I, and this is more of a mom and pop shop. It's, you know, Carrie Berkheimer is world renowned rod builder. I, would, I, I hasten to call it a mom and pop because it's a, it's a, it's a big company, but they don't do the numbers that these giant companies, you know, like Orvis and Sage and St. Croix and the rest of these companies do. They're, it's, it's more of a mom and pop. So of course it's going to cost them more and you're going to pay for it. That's a great spot. That's, that's a, if you want to put in thousand dollars, that's a good company like that. I can see that. But when you look at the major companies, you know, they want you to believe they have more technology. They want you to believe their designers are better and things like that. And in today's market, that's really just not true anymore. It, it truly is not. The rods are still beautiful. And if you like them, they're great. And it doesn't mean that I'm not saying that the thousand dollar rods aren't good rods. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that a lot of the two, three, four hundred dollar rods out there today are just as good as those thousand dollar rods, but they're Korean made. Almost all of those high, that, that high quality rod is made in Korea. And I, and I brought that up because the, when I did the, the, the review on the Echo Traverse and I said, I don't know if you saw it or not, but uh, when I was doing it, my girlfriend and I were going to go ride up in the mountains on the horses and, and I couldn't find a rod tube to stick my, uh, I wanted to take a, you know, a nine foot rod up with me, four piece, and I couldn't find one. And I'm digging through my house. I'm going crazy because I'm in a hurry. And I just run over to the shop and I grabbed that rod and I took it up and I just wanted one, you know, one that Mel could fish with. And so we get up there and I take it apart. I mean, it's completely in the, everything but the box is still there, right? It's in its tube. I take it out, pull the line, and I, you know, I'm lining it up and I go to cast it and I'm just setting it up so she can go fish on the, on the shoreline. And I'm like, man, I really like this rod. And I liked it a lot to the point where I fished it the entire year. I fished it all season. I fished it on the lake. I fished it on the river. Absolutely fell in love with it. And it started to, and I, and when I was doing the review, I, I started to say, this is a good starter rod. That seems to be a kind of a catch point. We would say it's a starter rod. It's a backup rod. Well, the bottom line was it really is just as good as my other rods. And it was a $280 kit rod. And so it, and that was kind of when I made the comment, I could give you my opinion on a thousand dollar rod. And so I started looking at these rods and Jeremy is always telling people in the shop, you know, rods, what you like, it doesn't matter what you pay for it. And that's where I was trying to get to with this. The $200, $300, $400 rods, if you go back in time and you look at the Temple Forks, when, when Rick came out with Temple Fork, it was a revolution in this industry. I mean, they sold so many rods and they were all 200 bucks. And the bottom line was they were damn good rods, right? And then Reddington shows up and then a little higher dollar Douglas shows up. They are spectacular rods. And so what I'm trying to get to is the fact that it may not be a starter rod or a backup rod. You go, you go cast it. If you like the rod and it's 200, 300 or $400, you like the rod. The warranties are in many cases better with the lower dollar rods with the two, three, $400 rods or really they're Korean. They stock more parts. Some of the companies, you don't even have to send the rod in. You just tell them what section broke. You can get the sections replaced. So you're no longer paying for the warranty. So if you're not paying for the warranty and you're getting just as good or better with the cheaper rod and you like it just as much or better, you like it just as much or better. So what I'm telling you is that just because you, it doesn't mean that the thousand dollar rod's bad. If you like the rod, you like the rod. But what I'm saying is you might like the $400 or the $300 rod just as much and it's just as good a rod. Hope you liked it. Hope it helps you out.